So in this video, I'm going to introduce the concept of discretionary access control and just discuss the general ideas of access control overall to give you a general idea of what discretionary access control does, why we might want to use it, and then we can look at how to actually use it on our system in the, vid in the videos that follow this one. So starting off, what actually is discretionary access control? So discretionary access control is a situation where the owner of a resource decides how it is shared. Now, when we discuss a resource, a resource can be anything like a file, a directory, some sort of file on our system typically would be considered to be a resource. And the person who creates that resource is typically designated as the owner of that resource. So the idea is that the owner is going to be able to decide who has access to this specific file or resource, as we would say. So the way that this generally works is you would create a resource and it would have no sort of permissions on it. Then from there, you can decide who should have various different permissions, typically things like reading the file, uh, writing the file, and executing if it happens to be a program. So those are the sort of permissions that we would typically be tweaking. Now, this is the simplest form of access control in the sense that we just have one single person who owns the file deciding who has access to it. So it's not something that's centralized. It's something that is distributed out to everyone. So if you create a file, you get to own it. You get to decide who has the permissions to access it. So like an example of this would be, you know, maybe I develop a program and I want people in IT to be able to run it. I can add the IT group as people who can execute it, but then I can limit, say, the write for the file so that people can't actually write to it. That way they can't like overwrite the program that I made, but they can execute it. That would be an example of a way that we could set up discretionary access control. In that case, myself as the owner is setting up the permissions, not anyone else. If someone needs access to this resource, they're gonna have to come to me and I'm gonna have to set up the access for them. So there's some pros and cons to doing this. Um, one of the pros to this is that management of permissions is managed individually. So it's actually very easy for permissions to be set up on the system because we just let everyone do it themselves. We don't have to worry about it as a system administrator. We don't have to you know, set up all these complicated permission structures. We just let people do what they want with their files. And this is great if the users are trusted. So if the users know what they're doing, this is fantastic because the users can just set up the permissions as they need them to be set up. However, in most cases, the users don't know what they're doing, so they won't necessarily know the intricacies of setting up an access control structure, right? There's nothing really in place to stop someone from setting the permissions too widely, right? So for example, you know, maybe we have someone in the accounting department, they create like the expenses for the year, and they just set the permissions to everyone because they can't figure out how to set it for like a specific group. That might be an example of somewhere where um, discretionary access control can go wrong, right? Because somebody sets the permissions more globally than they should be, and then we have data leakages. We lose all of our confidentiality because of that. So generally, discretionary access control can work well in systems where people are aware of what access control is targeted to do. So for that, a lot of the people who are more like technically inclined could use this sort of system very well. People who aren't as technically inclined might have a bit more trouble with this sort of system. So we'll see that there are other ways to set up access control, but we'll discuss a bit about discretionary access control because it is still something that's widely used. And it does have benefits in the sense that we can let people manage their own permissions if things aren't too sensitive of data, right? So in general, this works great for situations where the data is not considered to be all that privileged. You know, if somebody, you know, writes up a document and they just want to give out permissions to certain people, that works very well. If the data is something that is very sensitive, maybe we should let someone else who has a better understanding manage the permissions. So that would be the idea of that. So that's everything that I wanted to cover for this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to actually work with discretionary access control in your Linux systems.